to the show this morning. The topic this morning is young African-American professionals. And we're fortunate to talk, have here to talk about young African-American professionals, Pastor Kay Walker and uh, Mr. Brandon Van Leer. And of course, I think uh, Pastor Walker, let me uh, welcome you uh, and uh, Van Leer to a new season yes, in a real sense and to uh, uh, know that uh, this is Mr. Van Leer's first time being with us. Oh, yeah. But uh, as you know, and as you've probably told him, you've been with us for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And yes, so uh, we, uh, I think that our audience is quite familiar with uh, Pastor Kay Walker. And of course, what we'll have you to do is to make some statements in reference to your background, education, and experience. And Mr. Van Leer can then make the same information in reference to his situation. And we'll be out of this first segment, six minute segment. And then we can talk about young professionals and talking specifically about Van Leer and you as a professional. Let's do right. it from that perspective. Well, thanks a lot, Dr. Handy. Good morning once again. Thanks for you know having us on the show. Very informative show here. Comments. Uh, I think Pastor Kelvin L. Walker, born right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Good parents. Uh, raised me right, taught me right, you led me and steered me in the right direction. Of course, I was one of those hard-headed ones and I went off in the wrong direction. Uh, Raised up in the public school system and stuff up until a certain point where when I decided to learn, I would learn. When I didn't want to learn, I didn't want to learn. So mm -hmm. it got to a point where uh, I was just a bad guy, you know, at that time. And got, eventually I got put out of the public school system, got in trouble, ended up uh, shooting a guy. And uh, Judge Jenkins, Richard Jenkins in the juvenile court system, decided that I would be better off if I went to the military. So I went into the United States Navy at the age of 17, stayed in there a little while, and uh, got out. Pursued a GED through a OIC Opportunities Industrialization Center. Got that six month program there. Got that a GED, then and pursued some studies at Tennessee State University. They wanted to become a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the time, uh, Dr. Henry, I was caught up in drugs. You know, my drug addiction, heroin addiction would not allow me to uh, stick a stay in school. So I ended up. Uh, get bailing out of school and everything and ended up incarcerated in the state prison system because of some various number of crimes that I committed and uh, got out of the prison system, of course, unreformed, uh, unchanged. And, uh, but in 1986, on August 24th, 1986, God divinely intervened in my life and he uh, stopped the 17 plus year drug addiction, called me into ministry and that's been what I've been doing for the last almost 33 years now. And uh, I'm just delighted to be on your show and to uh, uh, bring, uh, this young brother on the show that I just recently met, man, that is uh, that's aspiring to do some great things in the professional realm in, in terms of entrepreneurship. And uh, just let him tell you something about himself. What about you, Mr. Van, Van Leer? Um, I'm here from Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised. Um, my parents are both from Kentucky. My sister, she's here. Um, I attended East Nashville Magnet School. Uh, and after that, I went to Tennessee State University on a scholarship, a full academic scholarship. Uh, I did not know I was going to get that, but um, Thanks to my guidance counselor, she um, put my name in the lottery for it, and I just so happened to get the scholarship, and that was a blessing for me, for my parents, and I had to pay for school and all that. So I went to school, wasn't sure what I was going to major in, but I knew I wanted to do something with graphic design, and I wanted to do something with uh, um, arts. And so I put the two together, and I just came up with graphic design. Cause, um, and then after that, four years passed by, I joined Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. I was a bachelor's for a year which is a president, great term for president. And then I graduated last year, and so now I'm on my own. I'm trying to make a career out of my graphic design, a career out of my uh, artwork, and now I'm here just pushing forward. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, Pastor Walker, I, you serve as a mentor for a large number of young people in, in a real sense. And what, what do you see in this young man in terms of, 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 of why well, it's important what he's doing. Well, Dr. Haney, I'm inspired because, you know, a lot of times, you know how it is when we turn our television sets on, Dr. Haney, and the first thing, you know, a lot of times we see is the negative news stories about something, you know, some young black man has done, you know, some, some crime that, you know, have been committed. And I'm first to say that when I was, uh, when I was committing crimes, I was guilty. I did it, you know what I'm saying? I should have been arrested and should have been incarcerated when I did it. But at the same time, you know, it seems like crimes are committed, but the crimes that the black male commits seem like they're more highlighted, they're more exaggerated, that more expressions are lent to it. And, and you know, and it, it sends a bad signal 
to the community, to society that says that we're all bad, you know, and that there's none of us that are good. So and when, when you encounter young black males, you know, of course, I know this is a myth. I know this is stupidity. And for somebody to even think like that, you know, you got to check, you know, wonder what they're thinking is has been derived from in the first place. But at the same time, when you see a young black man, you know, doing what he's doing, inspiring to grow, man, it's inspiring. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short break. Van Leer, <clears throat> uh, this will give you an opportunity to talk about to talk about some of the things that uh, you'd like to talk about. <clears throat> I need some water. <clears throat> yeah. Now what picture is that one right there? That's uh, Barack Obama. Oh man. I only had one easel, so. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this will give you an opportunity, Ms. Van Leer. <coughs> <coughs> Maybe after we get a shot of that one, mm -hmm. you can probably just put that other one. She can probably put that other one right there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you got one of Mr. Obama there, too. Yes, sir. That's uh, Barack Obama. Oh, see, you see that. I, did, I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just flipped around. I only had brought one easel. Uh-huh. And so you did one of Malcolm X, mm -hmm. and you've got... Uh, I have a collection about um, <coughs> 15 portraits or so. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, you talk about that. You know, tell us about uh, what you're doing and, and, okay. and why it's important in terms of what you're doing, <clears throat> and especially why you are concerned with uh, these African-American historical figures, uh, you know, Malcolm X and et cetera, and, et cetera, and some of the others that, yeah. that you have as uh, images. Okay. <coughs> how you got in? How you got, well, in, how you got into artwork and hey, all of that stuff? Take that much to get me a drink of water. We'll talk about. Uh, I'll talk about that. And I'll talk about my parents. Kind of, uh, my mom, my dad, and my sister are very really artistic. And, yeah. Uh, I grew up in an artistic household. So oh, great. Man. Yeah. Talk about all of that because it shows. Talks mm -hmm. about it. It shows your roots, man, and what you grew up out yeah. of. You know. And so this eight-minute segment, Mr. Van Leer. Now what do I do with this? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. He can't move until he get over there anyway. Yeah, because a lot of people talk about the environments, mm -hmm. our environments and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and how I think and how I put it somewhere. When they like talk about it, they talk about how just set it there. They always talk about how the negative environment impacts us. They don't talk about how the positive environment impacts mm -hmm. us. Okay, so this is the second segment that, of this show, right? Yes, sir. Second segment. <clears throat> if I missed it. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back to the uh, second segment of the show for today. We're talking about young African-American professionals and uh, Pastor Walker and uh, Mr. Brandon Van Leer are here both to uh, give us some information in reference to some of the challenges of uh, young African-American professionals as well as some of the work of uh, young African-American professionals. Let's talk about you, uh, Mr. Van Leer, to have you uh, to... Uh, make some statements in reference to uh, what you're doing in reference to your art and explain to a large number of folks as to uh, what it, me it means to be, a, what do you call it, a graphic, graphics designer. Talk about that and uh, give some examples. Well, I give my credit to my parents. Uh, I was raised in an artistic household. My dad, he had done um, theater his whole life, so he does uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, he also does music as well, um, Little Richard and stuff like that. And my sister, she's very artistic as well. And then my mom, she's more on the organ, uh, organization side. So I took those skills and I think growing up in that household has kind of um, pushed me to an artistic sense. And so now I use my abilities, my God-given talent that I realized, and I use it to highlight the black community. Um, I have a collection of about 15 portraits highlighting the black community uh, from Malcolm X to Barack Obama to Maya Angelou. A lot of people who I see as 
good role models for us, and I don't think they're highlighted enough. And I think it's very significant that I'm black, I'm African American, highlighting these African American uh, people. And I just want to um, give a good impact, a good role models for the uh, children. And also, I'm still young, so I think it makes um, it's more coming from me since I'm the same age as some of the kids who are are, are messing up and doing this and that. And so, using my platform, I want to be able to um, give a positive role model for people my age, people younger and just be able to help in all sense I can. It's also important, I think, Mr. Van Leer, to uh, demonstrate that uh, what a graphics designer is and uh, how folks might be able to become a graphics designer and the importance of it. Why don't you say something about that, uh, young black professionals, uh, Pastor Walker? You know, what, one thing I, I do want to say something about that, that's interesting to me is that, Dr. Hay, you know, we always talk about our environment you know, and how our environment impacts us and stuff like that. But when you look at people talking about that, it's always from a negative stance. It's you, you very seldom hear it, as, and I'm gonna put it like this, you very seldom hear it spoken of from a positive stance mm -hmm. when you're making reference to a young African-American male. Mm -hmm. It's always the negative, you know, you hear somebody, when a, when a young African-American male gets in, in, a, in trouble or something. What the first thing they go about? Well, it starts in the home. It starts in the home. It's, it, you know, and then he didn't have any home training. He wasn't, the parents wasn't right or this or that or something like that, reflecting upon the home environment and then the environment uh, immediately in, their, in the community, the, uh, community mm -hmm. that they grew up in. But now he's talking about an environment where all of his parents are all artistic and stuff like that. And it sounds like and that he come from a very good family and from a very positive environment that impacted him in a positive way. So therefore, he, he, he starts off on this, on this course of, of life, living life, looking not for the negative, but for the positive as a result of, of being uh, rooted and grounded in some positive soil. And that's what, you know, that's what steps out to me, you know, and, you know, the artwork, man, you know, when I was younger, you know, I used to like to draw, man. I would draw, I would draw these cartoon characters and stuff like that. But when I got uh, caught up in the, in the heroin and the drugs and stuff like that, my, I don't know where my little skills, my little <laughs> talent went, man. It just went out the window, man. It just, it just left, you know. I had a guy about a couple of weeks ago tell me, man, you know, maybe if you just sit down and just sit patiently and, you know, and just do it, you might, it may come back to you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. I just, you know. It just went away, you know, but to see, you know, this young brother here, man, that's, that's not only got this, the talent, uh, the God-given gift to mm -hmm. sit there and to, to draw and to do what he's doing, but to, to uh, reach out with it, mm -hmm. to, to seek to excel and to grow in it. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but to reach out and to highlight, you know, uh, the things that's going on, the people that, that represent positive things in the African-American community, people like Malcolm X, uh, Barack Obama, Maya Angelou, and, and there are so many others that, you know, he haven't even named all the portraits that he have. But man, just looking at his artwork of Malcolm, mm -hmm. man, boy. That's, and, and I was thinking that too, in, in a real sense, uh, Mr. Van Leer, that uh, to uh, come up with a, a series of artists, mm -hmm. I mean, a series of uh, individuals mm -hmm. that uh, you've presented by way of your designs, what were some of the organizational principles behind these individuals? <clears throat> Excuse me, for example, the ones that you've demonstrated today, uh, they are part of a larger series of 12, eight or 12 more. What are, were some of the organizational principles in terms of why did this individual make it and who made it and who didn't make it? Do it from that perspective. Okay, um, <clears throat> well, I'll talk about my first portrait. It was of Ice Cube. It was after I saw the movie uh, Straight Outta Compton. I know the movie wasn't family oriented, but it showed me how Ice Cube has gone from this environment and he's grown himself into what he is today. He's a positive role model now. He is, he's a producer, he's a, a father, he's an actor, so he's really established and he's, he's been resilient. And he's persisted through all these um, acts as a child or when he was younger. And I think that's really important is to keep pushing on, be pers uh, persistent and uh, push through anything and then Barack Obama, the first black uh, president, and that's, and that's just something you have to highlight no matter what. I also have um, Maya Angelou, a black poet, and a lot of females, a lot of women look up to her inspiration. I've done Michelle Obama, and right now she has her book Becoming. She's doing tours. She's, she's a, the role model for black women.
for young women. And I think that's really important to highlight people of that stature and just not any and everybody. But I think there's a, a select people that I do is people who I respect, who other people respect, mm -hmm. who are African American and people who are just positive role models to the community. Well, now, how do you uh, reproduce these uh, items? Uh, we've got about a minute and a half here. Uh, look, how do you reproduce them, and, 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 and what, do you, what do you do? Do you make them uh, for what, to sell or to what?